Okay, you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's go. So if you are a 22 year old male, uh, when I do, you you fell on your outstretched hand and you complained of right wrist pain. But that's not the thing. The thing is that after I did X-ray, I found radiolucent line across the waist of the right scaphoid bone. So what is the management? How can I radiolucent read? line? Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, radiolucent line on the right scaphoid bone. Scaphoid bone. Yeah. So what's his management for this patient? Sorry, I have something in my mouth. <laughs> what do you have? On the scaphoid bone. No, you have the scaphoid bone? Oh, okay. You have uh, maybe, uh, what do you call it? A vascular necrosis. Sorry, I have something in my mouth. <laughs> or oh, scaphoid fracture. Mm -hmm. uh, we do wrist immobilization for six to ten weeks. Yeah, it's a scaphoid. Scaphoid, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The other sensitive marker that they can tell you about, tenderness mm -hmm. in the anatomic snuff box, okay? That's a big one. Okay, now another case. If you are a 54-year-old woman mm -hmm. uh, who came to the clinic because of forceful hyperextension injury after you fell down, now you complain pain and swelling on the right wrist and pain with movement. On exam, I found maximal tenderness in the anatomic snuff box and pain with radial deviation of the wrist. So what should I do right now? So it looks also looks like a scaphoid also. Yeah, not... yeah, you place it in a cast, thumb mm -hmm. and spiker cast, and uh, repeat radiograph in seven to 10 days for necrosis, okay? So now, mm -hmm. if you are a 65-year-old man, man who ha you pay you you you're a house painter. That's what you work. But mm -hmm. on, on examination, when I flex your arm while asking you to relax the shoulder and point the thumb toward the floor at 60 degree of flexion, you. The, you begin to shrug your shoulder and complain of pain. Mm -hmm. So what is what is going on here? Is it a rotator cuff tendinitis? Yeah, excellent tendinitis, this one. It's called mm -hmm. uh, the test. Do you remember Sorry. The, name, the name of this test? Empty can. Yeah, empty can or near test. Test. Mm -hmm. test yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, would you just ask them to... I can do I can and they will have tenderness. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a seven year old boy, when I examine you, you're crying with significant ecchymosis and swelling at the, above the elbow. You hold your hand, your right hand, okay, and you can't move it like severe pain with any movement. When I do mm -hmm. x-ray, I found displaced, angulated, supraclavicular, supracondylar fracture of the humerus. So what do you think is injured in this fracture? Brachial. Yeah, brachial artery. There's another stuff. What, what are the other structures that can be injured in such a fracture? Hmm. What were the complications? So uh, complications like, um, what do you call it? It can have like a contracture or Volksmann. Yeah, um, good job, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or they, they can have Volksmann contracture. They can have compartment syndrome. They can have cupitus mm -hmm. varus deformity. And they can mm -hmm. have medial nerve injury too. The mechanism of supracondylar fracture, most common one, is fall on outstretched hand. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a good case. If you are an 18-year-old woman uh, who had a fracture of the tibia and fibula, but now 
you have the non-palpable petechiae on the upper part of the body. So what's causing that? Non-palpable petechiae? Mm. Where? Upper part of the body. Mm. What do you call it? Is it um cholesterol or yeah, yeah, fat embolism? Fat embolism, yeah. Good job, smart. Yeah, fat embolism. Mm -hmm. Petechiae in the upper chest and the uh, fracture. Now, if you are a 24 year old uh, with an, you're a, you're a dancer, okay? When I examine you, I found point tenderness over the anterior aspect of the right shin. So what's your diagnosis? Stress fracture. Yeah, stress fracture. If you are a 25 year old male who brought to the emergency room when I do rectal exam, I found high riding prostate and abdominal examinations shows distended bladder. Okay, and you have a constant urge to void, but you're unable to void. Okay, so what's causing it? What's injury to what structure? Hmm. Is it a testicular torsion? No, so this when you have after a motor vehicle accident you have a patient present with urge to void but he can't oh avoid. after a motor vehicle accident yeah okay with a high riding prostate mm -hmm. and distended bladder that's most likely urethral injury yeah urethral posterior urethral right. injury posterior urethral injury other mm -hmm. other signs like you have blood at the meatus mm -hmm. okay so there are three mm -hmm. things blood at the meatus Unable to urinate, second thing. Third one, high riding prostate. Okay. Okay, let's go next one. If you are a 45-year-old male, you had the blood at the urethral meatus and scrotal hematoma. When I examine you, I found high riding prostate with no sign of trauma. So what's the first step in management? So you don't insert catheter, you do, um, you, uh, what do you call it? Urethra, um, you, urethrogram, urethrogram. Yeah, yeah, excellent. You do urethrograde, urethrogram. Mm -hmm. oh, so how about if you, what if you answer, if you insert Foley catheter, what could that cause? It can cause, um, you know, like more injury. Yeah, it can, to cause, the... it can cause more injury and increase the risk of abscess too. <clears throat> okay, so now, so if you are a 25 year old male, when you had a multiple bruises overlying anterior chest and upper abdomen after a motor vehicle accident, obviously. Now, when that's the clue, that's the biggest clue even if they don't give you anything else. So there are, this uh, with the questions, there are clues that can give you the answer, clues that are not. So the one that give you the answer, they tell you on inspiration, there is an inward motion of the right side of the chest wall. Yes, yeah, what? Inspiration? Inward motion of the right side of the chest wall. Motion? Yeah. The chest wall moves. motion? Move. The chest wall moves oh. inside when you inspire. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So what's what's going on here? Fletchers. Yeah, Fletchers. Yeah. So you give him positive pressure ventilation. Okay. So. And pain medication. Yeah. And the post pressure ventilation make your chest movement symmetric. Okay. It's another clue. Now, if you are a 28 year old male with hypertension, tachycardia, and you're being intubated and you're placed on mechanical ventilation. But you go into cardiac arrest. So what could have prevented this cardiac arrest? Hypertension, increased heart rates. They went to cardiac arrest. Uh, after mechanical ventilation. Hmm. Maybe there was a, during the intubation, they put the, um, the tube in the, 
what do you call it? They put the tube all the way down to the lungs. No, so is that's that a, the one? That's, a, that's a very, okay, I don't know. very important concept that I want you to be aware of. Is that mm -hmm. in the beginning? Ouch! It's gonna sorry. So when you have <clears throat> when when you have a twenty eight year old male who had a motor vehicle accident and have a hypotension. Mm -hmm. Okay, before the hypovolemic shock. So before you give him mechanical ventilation, you gotta replace the fluid. Because if you don't do so, and you give him... You gotta replace the what? Give him fluid. Replace the fluid. Oh, fluid. Oh. Before you do mechanical ventilation. Because if you don't replace the fluid, mechanical ventilation can decrease the venous return to the heart. And causes circulatory collapse. The patient dies. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you could have been prevented. And it's a big loss. Do you do you say hypertension or hypotension? Hypo, hypo. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Hypo. Hypo. Now hypo another tension. another another good case. If you're a 31 year old male who had involved in a motor vehicle accident, I had I had you in a in a lot of motor vehicle accident today. So. <laughs> Now, <laughs> after that, you had a blood pressure of 85 over 50, heart rate 120. But that's, that's common. Now, that's what I was going to give you the answer. Your neck veins are flat, trachea shifted to the right. Over the left hemithorax, breath sounds are absent and there's dullness to percussion. So what's your diagnosis? Donors to percussion, so two things are going to cause that, either hemotorous or um, what do you call it? Um, so donors will be, um, what do you call it? Plural effusion can be due to that. Yeah, it's hemotorax, so hemotor yeah. Yeah, hemotorax, yeah. But if I say absent birth sound with hyper resonance, if I just change the word, if I... Then that would be pneumothorax. Yeah, if I just, you see, this one word can give you a lot. So some of the sentences in the questions mm. really mean a lot. Some of them not. So, for this reason, so when you say decrease, yeah. um, breath sound is likely due to fluid accumulation or blood accumulation, hemothorax, right? No, right, right. Okay, now, all right. If you are a 34-year-old male, with a temperature, uh, with a normal temperature, but you have hypotension, tachycardia. Your hypertension or hypotension? Hypo, hypotension. Okay, Blood just give us a number so that. 90, <laughs> yeah, it's 90 over 60, pulse is 100. Okay. Mm -hmm. Orofang, there's an erythema and scattered. Where? There's an erythema and scattered blisters in the oropharynx. Orifaris, okay. Yeah, carboxy hemoglobin is 20%. Okay, this happened after a, you've been in a burning building. So what mm -hmm. should you do right now? What's management? So you have to give the patient, oh, okay, two things. I'm trying to process it in my brain. Either you... If the patient is unstable, you can intubate and then you give a, also um, hyperbaric oxygen. Yeah, and intubate, yeah, good job, and hyperbaric. Okay. Now, if you have a fracture on the rib, how do you treat that? Fracture on the rib? Hmm? Mostly no binding, pain medication. Yeah, good pain job. Management. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Uh, you give him non-steroidal opioid. If that didn't work, then you can do intercostal nerve block. Right. But you gotta be careful. This carry high risk of pneumothorax. So you gotta be careful. Watch out for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are the risk factors for post-operative pulmonary complications? This is an important topic. Oh, risk factors, smoking, mm. pulmonary complication, right? After surgery or what? Yeah, yeah after surgery, yeah, post-operative. Yeah, yeah. So if we they have, are, hmm? like, 
So the pulmonary complication after surgery could be pneumonia, atelectasis. Oh, that's what you're asking. Could okay. be, yeah, it could be atelectasis, could be bronchospasm, it could be exacerbation of a COPD, it could be prolonged mechanical ventilation. Okay. So it could be any of them. The people who are okay. at high risk is if you are more than 50 years old, or if you have emergency surgery or surgery more than three hours, mm -hmm. or if you have heart failure, or if you have COPD. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there's one thing they call American Society of Anesthesiologist class. If you're m more than class two, then also high risk. So what are mm -hmm. the strategies to prevent postoperative pulmonary complication to do that we do before the procedure? Yeah, that's the one that if they smoke, you tell them not to smoke for at least six to eight weeks. Oh, yeah, that's If they one. have a COPD um, exacerbation, you have to control it before. Okay. If they have any type of a lung infection, you treat it before the time. And then, um, yeah. Good job, yeah. Um, asthma control, all of, all of any lung, just make sure that treated before. Good this. job, yeah, you're right, yeah. Smoke cessation, treat COPD, treat any infection, and also educate the patient about lung expansion, chest physical therapy, coughing, deep breathing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Incentive is primary. Okay. How about the post operative strategies? What are they? Post op? Yeah, that decreases. Yeah, the, the what we said before incentive spirometry, um, deep breathing exercise, um, I guess getting up and walk, you know, yeah. ambulation. And positive airway pressure also. Positive and, and, airway pressure. Uh, yeah. Another thing is the analgesia. If it's which one is better, the epidural or parental opioids? Mm? Which one that have less risk of pulmonary complication, epidural analgesia or parental opioids? So epidural, anal uh, epidural okay. analgesia have less mm -hmm. risk of pulmonary complication than parental epidural. opioids. Yeah. Okay. Epidu epidural analgesia have less risk of post-operative pulmonary complication. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you are a 29-year-old woman. 29-year-old. Yeah, and you had the circumferential burn in your right extremity, and you develop severe deep tissue pain on the right limb and edema of the hand. On examination, I found circumferential scar over the right arm and the pulses are faint and with paresthesia on the right arm. So what mm -hmm. should I do right now? So uh, I'm thinking um, that this, okay, you said it's circumferential, right? Yeah. So is it not the same thing we answered before? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, they had two questions. Yeah, are you trying thing. to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you wanna... <laughs> yeah, I'm on a, on a test. Like if you your re reliability on the same answer. <laughs> yeah, good job, this car to me. Yeah, you answered that. Okay, now if you have if you are a 40 year old female, you have weak neck knee extension and decreased weak neck knee knee extension. Knee, okay. And decrease, decrease sensation over the medial side of the right lower thigh and leg. So what is your diagnosis? What's okay. nerve injury? Sean. Hmm? They get turn over where? Hmm? I'm sorry, what is it? Did you say can you 40 year old female? Yeah, you have weak knee extension. So what nerve is that? Yeah. You're talking about, is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Give us more information. Come on, Dr. Ali. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's, 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 you don't need like, so this knee extension, which one, with what nerve control knee extension? It's the femoral nerve, right? 
Yeah, that's I, I say tomorrow Nev, and then you kept quiet. You didn't want to say anything. Really? Oh, I didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's a simple question. I give it on. Yeah, just weak knee extension. That's it. And femoral nerve. Period. That's it. <laughs> so now, if you are a 55-year-old woman who present with worsening headache and right-sided weakness. When I do CT of the head, I find partially calcified round extra axial mass that's compressing the left frontal lobe. Okay, um, and the, the mass appear durally based and homogeneously enhanced on post codalinium MRI. So what's the treatment for that? If it's a mass, then it has to be removed. Yeah, excellent. Remove them. So you say calcification. Are you talking about maybe like um, meningioma? Yeah, good job. Exactly. Okay. All right. Mm, I feel that like one of my attendings, he had his, like his mom had some, because of that. Oh, really? Had, yeah, she lost. She, oh, wow. She, yeah. She left this life because of this meningioma. It was an upper upper. This one is also upper upper. If you're, oh. if you're dural, if it's a dural or based, it's a upper upper. They can take it. But if it's in the mm -hmm. middle, that's hard to get it out. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so now, if you are a 69 year old male who have weakness in both of your lower extremities and urinary retention. Mm hmm. Immediately after a thoracic aortic aneurysm repair. So what's going on here? So something big. You have weakness in lower extremity and the urinary retention mm -hmm. after a thoracic aneurysm repair. Mm -hmm. so that's it's, it's no joke. It's a big thing. Like when you have, and you have. When I examine you, I found paraplegia, loss of pain and temperature. Mm -hmm. But vibration is intact. But loss of pain and I think it has something to do with the. Okay, loss of temp temp temp. Uh, what? Yeah, you you don't have loss pain. of pain and temperature. Yeah, and the anterior, and the lower extremity. So what is going on? Here? I'm thinking. I don't. I'm thinking this is has to do with um spinal artery, anterior spinal artery. Yeah, anterior cord. And then I right? call the cord cord uh, compression. Yeah. No, no, not compression. Infarction because of the. Infarction, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. But it has to yes. do with the spinal artery, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <clears throat> now... Mm, infarction, yeah, infarction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's infarction, okay. Now, if, uh, so, if you are 36-year-old woman with a throat pain for the past six days, Okay, so which of the following next spaces infection carry the highest risk of mediastinal involvement? You say which of the following? I'm lazy. We are waiting. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it the parapharyngeal space or retropharyngeal space? Um... Yeah, it will not. It will be retro, right? Yeah, yeah, retro is most likely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carry a intermediastinal. Right? The parapharyngeal <laughs> can cause to the carotid artery. Okay. Submandibular. Can cause what? Can cause to the carotid. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Submandibular yeah. cause Ludwig angina. Ludwig mm -hmm. angina. Sublingual space. This doesn't go to the intermediastinum. Okay. So it's a retropharyngeal space. Okay. Let's go. So now, if, uh, if you are a 73-year-old male, on the post-operative day 8, you complain of pain. 73-year-old male. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On post-operative day 8 to 9, like this, you complain of pain and swelling in the left angle of the jaw. When I examine you, I found swelling, erythema, tenderness in the region of the left parotid gland. Mm -hmm. White PC is 15,000. 
Okay, so how can I treat you? Uh, yeah, give them fluid, give them lollipop. <laughs> huh? What is that? I say lollipop, like ice cream, something in their mouth to move, you know, the, is that, is that the one? I, I don't remember the name, but it's like something that has to do with the mouth, you know, when they don't have like, um, like if you give them something like lollipop, you know what is lollipop, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. will help them to yeah, move. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's a par paratitis, <laughs> it's bacterial acute yeah. bacterial paratitis. Mm -hmm. Just give to them to get things yeah. moving and flowing. Yeah, fluid intake and oral hygiene. Okay, yeah. now, now if you are a sixty-year-old male who has a right calf pain, on examination of the right calf is slightly larger than the left. If you what your a 60 year old yeah 60 year old on the duplex ultrasound of the lower extremity shows a clot in the right distal portion of the femoral vein so how can i treat that okay femoral vein mm -hmm. um femoral vein so this would be like a proximal so proximal, you can do, um, what do you call it? Um, I think you can do embelochomy or you can do, um, you can also anticoagulate, right? Yeah, I just give them heparin. Yeah, heparin. Yeah, and they can tell you even right cough pain with those reflection. It's mm -hmm. another clue too. Now this is a, a good good topic, okay? so. If you are a 34-year-old male who had a laparotomy for a gunshot wound, but on the post-operative day six, you developed fever. Okay, so what could be causing this? You had the right internal jugular, triple lumen catheter, and Foley catheter. They are in a place right now. And two days later, the blood culture shows coagulase negative staphylococci. Four out of four bottles. So mm -hmm. what is the reason for this fever? Yeah, central venous catheter infection. Yeah, excellent. So now we have this called post-operative fever. Within two hours, what could happen? Cause fever. So within, within two hours can be either medication. It can be either like a previous, you know, something going on with the patient before the surgery. It can be, it could yeah, be, two yeah, hours. It could be, it could be a blood product like transfusion, right? Right, yeah. Could be an infection, got, yeah. Could be mm -hmm. prior trauma, could be malignant hyperthermia. Mm -hmm. So good job. You know, this is this is important because they can tell you they can they just change the timing and the answer will be different. So mm -hmm. this is within two hours. But what if it's after one day? What could happen? So after one day can be uh, what do you call it? the wind, water, something, um, it can be the atletesis, right, or pneumonia or something, or one day. Yeah, one day. So within one day oh. to, to a week, what could mm -hmm. go wrong? There could be a, could be a PE, could mm -hmm. be BBT, could be MI. Mm -hmm. And could be nosocomial infection, like from the hospital, or it could be surgical site infection by group A strip, or Clostridium perfringens. Okay. So, but mm -hmm. what if after one? This is called acute post-operative fever. So the immediate we discuss the immediate one. We discuss the acute. What about the subacute that present after one week? Fever. What's what is what causing that? Yeah, that I need to review. Yeah, it caused, it's called either Clostridium infection. Yeah, it was annoying for me too. It caused either drug fever or PE or DVT or surgical site infection, catheter site infection by the other organism other than a group A strip or Clostridium. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay. How about the delay? I'm, I'm, 
Hello? Hello? I said main and can you, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. And my son. No, are um, you picking up your son? So do you want me to pick him up at 3.45? You want me to talk with myself? Uh, Sahar, you're here? What about... Yeah, so the last thing is the delayed fever, which is a viral infection or surgical site infection due to indolent organisms. Okay. Now, next, if you are a 34 year old. <laughs> okay. So, if you are a 34 year old unrestrained male uh, driver, you brought to the ER after motor vehicle accident, your blood pressure 70 over 30. After two liter of IV fluid, your blood pressure is 80 over 40. So that indicates some internal bleeding. So you gotta do laparotomy for this patient because it's not responsive to the IV fluid. Another time when you do so, when you have a trauma, okay, look at the hemodynamic stability. If it's stable, just do do the CT scan, okay. Uh, but if the patient is unstable, so for, for anyone who's unstable with a trauma, look at the type of injury. If it's a blunt trauma, then you do fast. If it's penetrating gunshot wound, wound trauma, we do laparotomy. That's the thing. But if there's someone blunt and positive fast, then we do laparotomy. If negative fast, then we do peritoneal lavage. Okay. Now, if you are a 25 year old male who have who been in a road traffic accident and your, your abdomen is tender in the left upper quadrant and ultrasound shows fluid in the renal angle, then we got to do a CT scan because this could be cyclinic injury. Hi, are you guys following me or should we like uh, take a rest for 10, 20 minutes and then we continue? You do later. Huh? Do you have... Okay. <laughs> so if you are a 54 year old man who had an abdominal pain, that's constant and uh, that interfered with your sleep and you lost some weight and you have tenderness and fullness in the epigastrium and you are a smoker you have 30 pack year of smoking history so what's go what's going on here pancreatic cancer good job yeah so risk factors for that for pancreatic cancer is uh, smoking hereditary pancreatitis and non-hereditary pancreatitis and obesity and lack of physical activity as a risk factor for pancreatic cancer. Uh, clinical presentations is you have weight loss, anorexia, abdominal pain, back pain, jaundice, atypical diabetes, migratory superficial thrombophlebitis, uh, hepatomegaly, ascites, and on labs, you have increased alkaline phosphatase, increased cancer-associated antigen, 19, 9. And abdominal ultrasound, you do that if there is jaundice. Or you can do CT scan if there is no jaundice. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, about it. Uh, Steve Jobs had a uh, pancreatic cancer. So I it know, takes, that was so uh, sad. That was so sad. And it, should, it, takes, it takes one year to get a pancreatic transplant but for him it took two days but still <laughs> he couldn't so he got it and he still died yeah really yeah oh wow what happened i don't know to be honest with you hmm. i don't know what happened maybe something yeah you know there's always reason for you you know okay so now if you are an African-American boy at the newborn nursery and you have a soft swelling 
on the umbilical region that 1 cm in diameter covered by a skin. How do you manage that? Oh, covered by a skin will be unfallocily. So you have to, you know, cover it up with um, some saline, sterilized saline gauze or something, you know, to kind of like prevent um, um, water loss or moisture loss, loss and then and surgery. So omphalocele is covered by peritoneum. What did you say this one was covered by? By skin. This is umbilical hernia. So, oh, oh, yeah. sorry. So just observe, yeah. <laughs> and gastroscosis okay. does, is not covered by anything. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, say so covered by skin. Right. Okay, okay, okay. So um, you observe it and when? Like, is it one year or four years? Yeah, just What's, observe. Yeah, it should should be, should get better, like around age five. Yeah. Age five. How, how did you present it? Can you repeat the presentation again? Yeah, it's a present like with a soft swelling of the umbilical region, that's covered by skin. By skin. Okay. Okay. Um, this reduce of them. Gastroscosis. It's contained bowel, but uh, and the umbilical cord ins insert next to the defect. But on mm -hmm. cell, the umbilical cord insert at the apex of the defect. Mm -hmm. Again, the and covered by peritoneum, and contain peritoneum. contain multiple organs, okay. while gastroscosis only contain bowel. Okay. Okay. Now, if you are a 54 year old man who had a motor vehicle accident, ultrasound shows a free intraperitoneal fluid. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have left upper quadrant uh, pain. So what's what's going on here? So left upper quadrant pain for it. For it. So maybe like a splenic rupture. Yeah, a splenic rupture, laceration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, laceration, yeah. If you are a 12 year old male, who had a direct blunt trauma to your abdomen, and then old male. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A what? Blunt trauma? Oh. Oh, just a second, just a second. The, our our time in the library has ended. Just a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you are so if you are a twelve year old male with a direct blunt trauma to the upper abdomen and you presented with an on the CT scan there is a duodenal hematoma. So what is the management for that? Hmm? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, yeah. Okay. Hi, could you hear me? There's a lot of noise in the background. <laughs> Yeah, so we do NG suction and parental nutrition for duodenal hematoma, okay? Now, if you are a 31-year-old male who presented with a pain and swelling over your, over the back, uh, over the, your butt, and then you had a history of acute pyelonephritis one year ago. So what do we call that when you have pain and swelling on the butt? What is that? Pyelon where? In the in the butt, in the coccyx. And you had what? Yeah, this is called pyelonodal cyst. Mm. Young male with large body hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's me. So they have pyelonodal cyst. That's her soft swelling in the butt. So now, if you are an 82-year-old woman, with uh, she was feeling unwell with nausea and decreased appetite for the past five days, and you sorry, have, hmm? 82 year, yeah, yeah, 82 year old woman with decreased appetite for the past five days. Okay, and, uh, you have mild self resolving episode of vomiting, abdominal bloating, and cramps. Okay, your abdominal x ray shows dilated loops of small bowel and air in the intrahepatic bile duct. So what do we call that? What's what you, what's going on here? Call stop. Hmm? 
بس لا اتس ا ميكانيكال باول ابستراكشن اوكي ناو This is very important case. If you are a 64-year-old male who have a history of coronary artery disease and peripheral artery disease, and you had hypotension, multiple hypotension episodes, now you're presented with abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea, and your lactic acid is elevated. So what could be going on here? Chemical. Hmm? Is this? It's an ischemical lytis. So the risk mm -hmm. factor, age more than 60, chronic renal disease, hemodialysis, or when there is atherosclerotic vascular disease, myocardial infarction. <laughs> Clinical feature, you have mild pain, tenderness, hematochesia, diarrhea, and lactic acidosis. On CT, shows thickened bowel wall, double hollow sign, and nematosis coli. Colonoscopy shows a mucosal pallor or cyanosis with petechiae and hemorrhage. Management, how do you manage it? You do supportive, you give IV fluid, bowel rest, IV antibiotic, colon resection. That's the last resort. Okay. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So now if you are a 33 year old man uh, who's, who had a, who fall on your bicycle hand, uh, handlebar. So you fell on your bicycle handlebar. So imagine this is an epigastric trauma. You return one week later with fever, shaking, chills, poor appetite, and deep abdominal pain. So what organ you're most likely injured? Duodenum? Uh, pancreatic laceration, that's most likely. Oh. Okay. Okay, just a second. No, 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 I'm saying this is the third Okay, so this is pancreatic laceration. Okay, now if you are a 39 year old woman who underwent thyroidectomy for Graves' disease, now you have a QT prolongation 500 uh, milliseconds. So, what's going on here? Thyroidectomy. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, maybe uh, what do you call it? Um, hypocalcemia. Yeah, excellent. Hypocalcemia. Now, if you are a 45-year-old woman uh, who had an elective total hysterectomy, and now you have blood pressure 70 over 40 with a pulse 110. Okay. When I examine you, you have a plethoric face, buffalo hump, and central obesity. Your potassium is 4.9, glucose is 50, sodium is 132. So what's causing your condition here? Okay, they have hysterectomy, uh, uh, whatever. So, and how long before you started having all these symptoms? Mm -hmm. So this is one. So you have so you have a Cushing disease. That's uh, that's you have it. That's in the background, and then you had a hysterectomy postoperatively. You had hyperkalemia, potassium four point nine, and the glucose low is fifty. Oh, okay. okay. If I want to help it's you more, I can tell you that there is nausea, vomiting, and adrenal. Yeah, yeah, adrenal insufficiency. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Insufficiency. So, if you are a 55-year-old male Asian immigrant uh, who had episode of epistaxis lately, and you drink two beers daily, and there is a mass in the posterior nasal cavity, so what's causing that mass? EBV. Yeah, excellent. These are fungal carcinoma. Risk factor is uh, yeah, EBV and uh, uh, smoking also. This is the risk factor. And chronic nitrosamine consumption also. Uh, okay. mm, yeah. So now if you have pain and... Uh, so if you have a skin lesion that's enlarging and there is pain with increased drainage, Okay, what's causing this? What cancer? What's skin cancer? This on your skin. Squamous. Yeah, squamous. Marjolin, Marjolin also. Okay, why? The, the squamous cancer? Yeah, yeah, good job. Yeah, when they have the uh, ulcer, scar, and drainage, that's a marjolin ulcer, squamous. Good job. Can you hear me? Hmm? Yeah, Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you, but sometimes it's breaking. Yeah. Okay. Hello, can, 
Okay, you, can you hear me? Okay, so now if you are a 55 year old male with with a chronic leg problem and varicose veins, so what's causing the varicose vein? Most common cause. Chronic medical condition and, and varicose vein. Chronic leg problem. And they give you talking a about venostasis. Yeah, venous hypertension that is causing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you are a 54 year old male who wakes up in the morning and uh, who have who have who have heaviness and cramping in the same leg that worse after a long day at work. Okay? and worsen throughout the day. So what's causing mm -hmm. that edema? Valve insufficiency. Yeah, venous valve incompetence, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a sudden right leg weakness with absent pulses and cool to touch, what's going on? Cool to touch lower extremity. With no pulses, pain. What is that? In ischemia. Yeah, yeah, most likely I feel it in The P P P P P P. Now, if you have, if you are a 44 year old male who's unresponsive and hypotensive after a high motor vehicle accident, okay, and then when I do X-ray, I found wide mediastinum. What's causing that? Yeah. Hmm? That's an aortic injury. Dissection. Or injury, yeah. yeah, aortic dissection or injury. Yeah. So now, if you are an 88 year old male who have a severe right calf pain after undergoing uh, right artery embolectomy, okay. Now, when I examine you, right calf is swollen, tense, and tender, and the pain worsening by passive worsening by passive extension of the right knee. Okay. Compartment then, syndrome. Yeah, soft tissue swollen. The common uh, symptoms, they have pain on passive stretch, rapidly mm -hmm. increasing, tense swelling, paresthesia, mm -hmm. that's an early manifestation. Mm -hmm. okay. Pain out of proportion. But the late manifestation, they have motor weakness within hours, paralysis late, distal pulses, decreased distal pulses, that's uncommon. Also. And they may have decreased sensation too. Okay, so that's about it. Let's do a really rapid review of the, so that's the end of the surgery. Let's just do a rapid review for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it properly, this one, because it's an important one. Okay. So we do wrist implanting for scaphoid fracture and repeat x-ray in seven days. Uh, okay, tendonitis present with a positive near test. Brachial artery injury present after a supracondylar fracture. You have leg petechiae. You have if you have a petechiae and fracture, that's a fat embolism. Uh, if you have tenderness in the metatarsal fracture, that's a stress fracture. If you have high riding prostate, the standard bladder after a motor vehicle accident, that's a urethral injury. So we do a retrograde urethral gland. If your chest moves inward with a breathing, that's a vial chest. you got to do volume resuscitation before mechanical ventilation. If you have dullness to percussion with absent breath sound, that's a hemothorax. If you are in a burning, you just came out of burning building, you've got to do intubate. If you have a fracture, we got to do an GC. It's going to Okay, so breathing exercises is the one that prevent post-operative pulmonary complication. Okay, if you, if you have circumferential scar, we do a scar uh, If you have weak knee extension, that's a femoral nerve injury. If you have a dural mass and left lower weak, less like focal neurotic deficit, we gotta take that out, take the mass out. If you have muscle weakness at lower bilateral, lower extremity weakness after motor vehicle, after aneurysm repair, that's a most likely a spinal cord infarction. Okay, so now the highest risk of infection that goes to the mediastinum, that's a space that can go to the mediastinum. 
parotitis, which is with oral fluid. Okay. If you have a gram negative staphylococci on culture after post op fever, that's most likely central line associated infection. If you have abdominal pain with weight loss over a long period of time, most likely pancreatic cancer. If you have soft swelling on the umbilicus covered with skin, that's uh, umbilical hernia. If you have duodenal hematoma, we treat it with NG suction and parental nutrition. If you have if you're, if you're a hairy man with pain and swelling over your coccyx, that's pyelonodal disease. If you have frequent hypertensive episodes and abdominal pain and bloody stool, that's a septonic lecture, ischemic colitis. If you have abdominal trauma and you present with shaking chills, poor appetite, Deep abdominal pain, fever, that's most likely pancreatic laceration. Thyroidectomy, prolonged acuity, that's a hypocalcemia. Uh, hyperkalemia with hypoglycemia after surgery, that's an adrenal insufficiency. Mass in the posterior nasal cavity, that's a viral infection. Okay, persistent pain and draining nodule. Enlarging nodule, that's a squamous cell carcinoma, margarine also. If you have leg edema that wears after a long day at work, that's a venous valve incompetence. If you have sudden, not palpable, pulp, sudden leg weakness, sudden right leg uh, pain, and not pul unpalpable pulse, so that's most likely arterial emboli. If you have a wider mediastinum after a motor vehicle accident with hypotension, that's most likely your taking injury. So that's the end of the surgery. I'm glad that we finished surgery for today. Okay, so do you guys have any questions about about the discussion or anything? No. Okay, sounds good.